Thank you all for joining us today at the uh, National Press Club. My name is Mark Sheff. I am a reporter with uh, Crane's Workforce Management. And we welcome uh, for a newsmaker, uh, we welcome you for the newsmaker discussion addressing America's air quality crisis by reducing uh, tailpipe greenhouse gas emissions and, and air pollution. Uh, recently, uh, research, research has revealed the tangible links from particulate material emissions from vehicle tailpipes, a main cause of air pollution. Um, the, the research has linked that to serious health problems, including respiratory uh, disease, lung damage, asthma, and premature death. My name is Frank O'Donnell with the Clean Air Watch, and thanks for all of you to have come, and thanks for the invitation to be part of this. I'll try to talk uh, more generically about the nature of the air pollution problem we have from uh, motor vehicles today. The U.S. EPA came out with a, uh, a report on air trends in this country. You might have seen that. Uh, a lot of interesting information in it, but one uh, number that jumped out at me was that 158 million people uh, in this country still live in areas that have dirty air air that can harm their health, air that violates national clean air standards. Even though uh, we have made some progress on some of these pollutants over the years, some of that progress is kind of bottomed out and we're not making as much as we were. Uh, this report noted that uh, ozone concentrations nationally have dropped only by about 1% since 2001. Uh, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the current administration, uh, but uh, the, the fact is we still have a major problem. Uh, a lot of it comes from motor vehicles. Uh, some of you may have heard there's a Harvard School of Public Health study coming out, I believe today, uh, that is going to confirm uh, some of the public health damage that comes from uh, motor vehicles. Uh, one of the other things that we would like to see happen from a, from a policy standpoint, uh, as the new Congress uh, starts looking at the whole question of green jobs, is to dedicate some of the green job uh, effort to cleaning up existing diesel engines. In the energy legislation that passed uh, three years ago, Congress authorized $200 million a year to, to dedicate money to go to clean up some of these existing diesel engines. The problem is that the appropriating arms of Congress did not follow through. And so, whereas we should have already had $600 million put into this cleanup effort, uh, only 50 has been put into it. So we hope that a, a green jobs program will include a component to make up that gap. Uh, today we're, um, we are uh, hoping to bring attention to a, uh, a problem, to acknowledge a problem that uh, many of us, uh, including myself, uh, have been very, very slow to acknowledge or even understand that every time we uh, drive a car, uh, we are creating uh, toxic uh, waste pollution outside the, uh, out of the tailpipe of our car that uh, threatens in a very serious and profound way uh, the health of uh, ourselves, our families, and our communities. And one of the things we hope to do today is to stimulate discussion about what is the appropriate action uh, to take. First, to acknowledge uh, that, uh, that this stuff that comes out of the tailpipe uh, can have serious and profound impacts on our uh, health and then to resolve as, a, as individuals, uh, as individuals in communities, and as a nation and as part of a world community, uh, since uh, this is a, a technology which is ubiquitous and which all of us participate in, uh, that we do something about it. Uh, we have uh, last uh, 30 or 40 years of uh, the environmental journey that all of us have taken has really told us the importance of time, that we don't have time to fight over the acknowledgement of these problems. We need to work together to find out, sift the real uh, from the fake. And there is plenty of data out there now uh, to make us wake up to the toxic waste that comes out of these tailpipes. But there isn't a law, there isn't a regulation, uh, there isn't a lawsuit uh, that is gonna solve this particular problem. Um, but there's not going to be um, any action taken unless there are laws, unless there are regulations, and perhaps even sometimes, if necessary, lawsuits in which uh, to make sure that the problem is both acknowledged and not ignored, and to stimulate uh, remedies. Thank you very much. Um, both Frank and Jan are both public figures. They get involved in awareness to problems. Awareness is extremely important. I represent the private sector, so what is my job? Once the awareness has been created, 
Someone has to go solve the problem. When we talk about solving the problem, it's difficult when you talk about legislation and the auto manufacturers to solve the problem. There are 250 million cars on the road today. All of them are emitting harmful emissions. 500 million cars worldwide. Now, if the car company woke up tomorrow and created a solution, how long would it take for that solution to take effect? It's a 15 to 20 year horizon. Our company was formed around solving a very specific problem. Cut, basically taking diesel vehicles and reducing the particular material pollution from diesel vehicles. We went after this technology, very noble endeavor, right? Let's try to capture the particles that were coming off cars. And we were very fortunate. What ended up happening was we, could, we developed this device. And again, when you're capturing particles from a combustion engine, the first thing you have to do is how do I filter from a tailpipe without creating back pressure or damage in the engine? Well, we solved that with our diesel technology. So all we did is take that same technology and bring it to a car. And immediately we saw that the filter material was getting filthy black. So any of these people, the car companies, that say that emissions are so clean now, you can practically breathe out of the tailpipe. Well, you try that. This is the stuff that's coming out of your tailpipe. We went to a laboratory to test how effective our technology was and found a very interesting side benefit. We're actually tuning the exhaust, improving the efficiency of the vehicle, which has the effect of increasing fuel economy and lowering the CO2 output. Now, before the skepticism uh, flag stopped flying up, uh, we're doing a release today that we went to ATDS, the most world uh, world-renowned laboratory in the United States, put a fleet of five vehicles to the EPA 511 test protocol, which is the most difficult test protocol out there. So let's, you know, sort of band-aid the problem today by, by reducing the emissions of the currently existing vehicles, both CO2 and, and particulate. And then that will give us a little bit of time, at least, to further develop those, those technologies that are being heavily invested in. There are billions of dollars in, in venture capital money going into clean technology. That will happen. That will be a reality. But uh, I think it's a combination of, of us uh, solving of today's problem and letting the car companies and legislation make it such that the problem goes away altogether.